this is an exciting time, not only for you, Jeff, but it's an exciting time for us as a church. It's an exciting time because God is um, closing some doors and he's opening other doors. And when he opens the door, we should follow him boldly through that. I love that. Uh, I love that we get to be a part of what God is doing. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to just guess that uh, there was not a time that you just said, maybe in elementary school, you said, you know, someday I'm going to live in Berlin. No? No? But God knew. He was not surprised. He was not surprised that God was going to use you and he was going to call you in that way. How many of you realize this, that the Lord's plan sometimes is surprising to us and sometimes disturbing to us? How many of you realize that? It's sometimes it's surprising to us and disturbing to us. Ask the prophet Jonah. Read Jonah again. Sometimes it's surprising and disturbing. And sometimes uh, we just have to come and say, all right, Lord, your plan, your plan is perfect and your timing is perfect. And I, I just want to begin uh, as we uh, get ready to open God's word together. In fact, I'm going to do this. If you need a Bible this morning, do we have a couple guys that could hand out Bibles? Uh, we're going to be in God's word in just a moment. Uh, but if you need a Bible, would you just raise your hand? We'll bring you one. Uh, this is going to be important because we want to see that God's timing and God's plan is perfect. Where do we find that out? We find that out by opening God's word together. But let me just tell you uh, before we get there, just where we see not only God's timing and his perfect timing and his plan, uh, where we've been able to see that as a church and just in the past little while, just in the past summer. So the first thing I, I want to, maybe you've heard this, maybe you haven't, but let me just talk about Darren and Debbie, uh, the housing situation for you, okay? Uh, so it was August all the way back. Think all the way back to August, way back to August. Uh, Darren was wrapping up his tour of duty well in Rochester, Minnesota, and I love that he finished well there. He was making preparations. He was handing off ministry to others. Uh, that, was, that is so wonderful. We love that. We love that. Their house is on the market, but it had not sold, and we need to be praying for that, that it would sell. I think there's open house today. We need to be praying that it would sell. Uh, we were talking on the phone trying to uh, discern what the next steps for them and for us would be. Uh, would Darren move out here and would Debbie and the kids stay in Minnesota? What would happen? What would, would, is that a good plan? Uh, would they move out here and live with friends or in a rental for a time? Uh, school was just a few weeks away, so we were beginning to feel the tension, uh, the crunch of timing and saying, Lord, I know your timing's perfect, but come on, where your timing is uh, not our timing, and we realize it again. Uh, and in that time, I think we'd email and I think we had like five plans like hey maybe this would work maybe this would work how, how about this and we were trying to figure it out in that time I just so happened I love that little coincidence there I just so happened to be talking with pastor Rick Harpel uh, at Westside Church good man Jeff he's a good man and uh, this is one of the things we were talking about I said hey Rick I call him Rick all right that's that's all right you <laughs> you, you go for it with that as well I said hey Rick uh, how have you what have you done to help staff make a transition from uh, when they're coming from outside the area. I, when we started the church, I already live here. Flip already lives here. And we, we all already lived here, all right? So that's, that wasn't as big a thing. But how do we do this well? What have you done that has helped? And he said, well, you know, uh, Jason, he said, one of the things that's really helped us in making that staff transition is that we have this house that sits on the corner of our property, and a lot of our staff that has moved here or missionaries coming home for a short time, uh, they've all lived in this house, uh, and that's really helped us, you know, make those transitions. And he said, hey, why don't you have Darren live in that house? What do you think about that? Listen, I had not even considered that. I had not thought about that. I was like, that is a great idea. Is it available? And he said, I don't know. I'm going to go down the hall, and I'm going to find out. I'm going to go check on it. He went and checked on it. He came back. He said, it's available. Why don't you have Darren move to this house? I think maybe that's what the Lord is providing for us. And I kind of got goosebumps. Like, hey, I, I called you just to get some wisdom, get some advice, and you end up giving us a house. Awesome. Your timing is perfect. Amen. Your timing is perfect. Your timing is good. That We, we love that. And uh, so as we were looking at that, it has been just exciting and i realized that jesus is in the business of just in time delivery have you seen that that he provides it when it's needed 
He doesn't provide it ahead of time, which sometimes with, if you're like a planner, that drives you crazy. He is in the business of just in time delivery. And so it seemed like God was just putting it together and we say, yes, amen. That's so good. And so we were ready for that transition and it was good. You guys arrived like with tons of time, like a day or two before school started. <laughs> Maybe not tons of time, but you arrived in time. And it was exciting because God was moving and he was, he was making this. And we didn't have to force that to happen. He just said, hey, I've already got a plan. Let me give you a, a second example here. Is that uh, when we uh, talk about somebody who is our ministry assistant here at Harvest, we mean uh, the lady who is like the, the first person you see when you walk in the office and the first person you talk to when you, you get on the phone. And for the last year and a half, it has been Jocelyn Bohan. And Jocelyn, where are you? All right. Uh, Jocelyn has done a great job for us uh, for the last year and a half, and uh, I tell her this uh, repeatedly, and she's like, I know, Jason, you told me that again. I tell her, your job when the phone rings is to shepherd somebody well, help them uh, get to what they need, get to where they're going, or if they need to talk to me, if they need to talk to Flip, or now if they need to talk to Darren, here's what's going to happen. Now, as school was approaching, and teachers and administrators around the, the valley were signing contracts, Jocelyn got a phone call from Riverside Christian School and said, hey, would you be interested in applying for the second grade teaching position here at the school? You need to know that Jocelyn has her teaching degree. And uh, so that's not like, why would they call that? You know, why would they call Jocelyn? <laughs> because she has her teaching degree and because uh, last year God opened the opportunity for her to be a para pro in that classroom, even sub in that second grade classroom. God was like already orchestrating and doing things that we didn't get what what he was doing what he was where he was going and so uh it was just one of those things of saying hey i think and so i remember you got the call and just a little bit say hey jason and flip you know i'm like yes <laughs> uh this this is in motion uh it just started like 20 minutes ago and so i need to let you know what's going on and you're wondering if she got the job right she got it all right she got it, it all right that's good yeah now, uh, we're thinking, okay, Darren's coming. That's a transition. We're going to get ready for him. Where are we going to put him? What's going to happen with that? Uh, Jocelyn's leaving. What are we going to do with that? The night before um, you went for your interview, Jocelyn, Christy got a text from Trisha Gilmore. Said, can I use you as a reference uh, for a, I'm applying for a job? Can I use you as a reference? And I'm like, as I'm going to bed that light, night, I'm like, all right, Jesus, you're up to something. You're up to something here. All right, let's see what happens. So Jocelyn, she interviews, and uh, she gets the job. Oh, I already told you that. That's exciting. And then, uh, you know, I said, Trisha, would you want to not use my wife's name as a reference for that job, but what about for this job? Would you consider that? And so the next week, uh, Trisha said, it's going to be a good fit. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. So they got to have... In God's perfect timing, which I'm, I'm in the middle of that, kind of freaking out, but not, not telling anybody I'm freaking out, you know, trying to keep it just really calm, saying, okay, all right, there's a lot of transition, a whole bunch of stuff at once, all right, this is the way you do it, Jesus, but sometimes you just kind of freak me out, and this is how it's going, all right. But they even got to hand off well. Jocelyn got to work a few days with Trisha before they both jumped into the deep end of their own pool, and that's so good. And so one of the things I want to do, uh, Trisha's not here this morning, but I want to just say thank you to Jocelyn and welcome to Trisha. Would you just do that? Yeah. Okay. Third thing, third thing, because this is where I'm like, all right, you are on a roll, Jesus. What, what do you got next? What's going on? This summer, this summer, let me tell you how he opened the door for this new office ministry space. Uh, some of you have heard the story, but I don't get tired of telling it, so plan on hearing it a few more times. Uh, we've been renting our uh, current office space, which used to be a coffee shop just, just north of here, just two blocks north of here, maybe not even that, uh, for the past five years. And if I were to tell you how he opened that opportunity for us, hey, we would celebrate and say, Jesus, you're so good. You're so good. It's been a great space. We, we run a lean operation. And so uh, we all pack in there uh, together. And it, it's been good. If you've been there, you've been able to see Flip's office cubicle you know, or in my spacious office in the back, <laughs> joking, all right, all right, that's not what we're after, but we were trying to figure out, okay, Lord, as uh, you're bringing Darren this way, what are we going to do, uh, where are we going to put him, 
What are we get? We're strategizing. What are we going to what's going to happen here? Uh, we're, all right, Lord, what are you going to do this summer? We were finishing up our last foundations class, which is part of our membership process. And at the end of that, I had some food left over uh, from that and uh, said, hey, let's take it to the I think we brought it to the Kohler's because Clay had had a surgery that week. And so let's let's take it there. And so I'm trying to get to their house with this food because it was like one hundred and five out that day. And it was, I'm like, I don't want this food to spoil. And so I'm trying to find their house. I got lost in Sila. <laughs> All right. I was so frustrated with myself. I'm like, what is your problem, Jason? And I just went round and round and round. And I'm like, I, I am a, an idiot. <laughs> you know, I got lost in Sila. How can that be? Uh, and so in my frustration, I stopped in front of a house and there was a house for sale and it was by Sila Realty signed out front. And I thought, you know what? Uh, Darren and Debbie are looking for a home. Uh, in fact, Flip and Debbie are trying to sell their house and move to Sela as well. They're looking for a home. By the way, Flip and Debbie, Darren and Debbie, different Debbies, all right? <laughs> That's important. That's important. <laughs> what kind of church is this? <laughs> Seen you on TV. No, no, no. That's not true. <laughs> Amen. It's not true. So I, I called uh, Sila Realty, called the office and said, hey, do you have information on this house? Yeah. The owner said, come on down. Now, here's what you need to know. I've been praying, Lord, would you give us for about a year and a half, year and a half, I've been praying, Lord, would you give us a new office space? This has been great, but I feel like you have something else for us. And I, I'm looking around town and saying, one of the things, one of the places I think might work great is that Sila Realty office. Lord, if that would be in your plan down the road, would you just make it happen? Would you cause that to happen? Would you do that? And, and Jesus uh, will wait on you. We'll do that. So I'm on my way. I, I, I found the Kohler's house. We gave, got, the, got the food to them so it didn't spoil. On my way to the office, and I'm praying, Lord, if you want to bring up, um, if, if you want to give us that office, if, if that would be in your plan, would you just bring it up? Would you bring it up so that you get all the glory, so that this, this is about you? I'm just driving, praying that way. I didn't get lost. I found it. I, I got there. I walked in, we talked about the house uh, just for a few moments, and then I said, hey, I'm interested to know what this building, it's an old church next to our current office, if you've seen it, it's been abandoned for 20 years. There you go, <laughs> thank you. It's been abandoned for 20 years, a long time. Hey, how much is that building? We talked about it, it's out of our price range. Um, they want too much. Yeah, they want too much, I agree with you, they want too much. And I said, okay, I said, listen, um, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out what to do. Is there anything else you can think of? And I'm just talking with the owner here. Uh, and really, the only time I've been into the office before this is to apologize for blocking them in on Sunday morning when you park illegitimately across the street. You know, all right? That I've been there a couple times. It was usually to apologize. And so I'm sitting and said, is there anything else you know of? And the owner said to me, why don't you buy my building? And here's what happened. In my mind, I was like, well played, Jesus. <laughs> well played. I'm going to admit, you're good at what you do. You're good. I, I'm going to give you that. So we talked about price. I said, I, I don't get to make these decisions. Can we look at it? And so I think the next day, we, some of us came and looked at it. And so you say, how long have you been working on this? Not very long. The Lord has opened an opportunity for us. And his timing is perfect. His timing is perfect. Right now, Darren and I are roommates in my massive office right there. That's all right. But the Lord is opening a, a ministry space, a bigger ministry space for us. Uh, and we just feel like the Lord is, is directing us. And we just have to say, hey, your timing is perfect. Your plan is perfect. And we want to be in step with your spirit. And I, I love that. So let me just uh, tell you, that's not a sales pitch. You know, like, oh, here comes the pitch. It's not. Here's the, here's the pitch I want you to hear. God is at work. He is at work when you see him and when you don't. He is at work. He is at work. And I want you to hold on to a verse that has been going through my head in each of these situations, each of these times when the Lord is saying, I'm providing, I'm providing, I'm providing, I'm providing, I'm going to take care of you. Here it is. It's Galatians 5 and verse 25. Did I get it right? I think I did. If we live by the Spirit, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. That means sometimes Christians who live by the Spirit can get out of step. 
with the Spirit. Get out of rhythm with God and say, you're going that way. I think I'm going to go this way. It's not good when that happens. And truly, this is the reality here is that if you have a relationship with the Savior, a relationship with Jesus Christ by faith, by coming to him and saying, I want you to take my sins and I want you to lead my life and I'm going to go where you go. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, your life with him, eternal life right now, the life that he gives you, it is meant to be dynamic. It is meant to be in motion. It is meant to be moving. It is meant to be just uh, one of those things where you don't say, ah, it's always the same. No, no, Jesus is the same. He's always good. But life doesn't have that always the same. We are going to need in this life, we are going to need to stay in step with the Spirit. To be able to say, your timing is perfect. Let's go with your timing. Your plan is perfect. Let's go with your plan. Jeff, his plan for you right now is to say, I want to use you for the next little while in Berlin, Germany. I've always had that in store for you. You didn't know that, but my timing and my plan is perfect. Get on board with my plan. Amen. And we're going to say, let's help support Jeff and let's, let's do that because we see how God has orchestrated this and put it together. Because this is the truth. Jesus is always leading us into new territory. He is always leading us to where we have not been before. Maybe you've noticed this. Uh, is there a picture on the screen? Did, there, here, I love this, this picture uh, because it almost looks like the camp where we were at at the retreat. Some of you who were at the All Church Retreat a couple of weeks ago may have seen this picture. Uh, because it, that path, uh, I love, it's a rocky path. It's not all smooth. Life is just not that way. But what you don't see, what I love most about it, is do you see the slight turn in that path up ahead? What you don't see, what's around the, the bend? That's what, where you say, I can see this far, but I can't see what you have in store for me around the bend, Jesus. And he's saying, I see it just fine. Stay in step with me. Don't fall behind. Don't run ahead. I, I've entitled this morning's message simply this, Terra Nova. Terra Nova. It literally means new land. It means new land, new territory in Portuguese, Catalan, and Latin. I'm hanging on to the Latin one myself. That's the one I'm going to go with. And I love this as we review and say uh, what Jesus has done. By the way, I have just led you through probably the longest intro to a message you've ever been through. <laughs> like, wow. You asked us to get Bibles out ready like 20 minutes ago. I know. There's more. Jesus is leading us as a church into Terra Nova, into new land. He's leading us to places where we've never been before. New staff and new ministry space and new opportunities. And we're saying, all right, Lord, help us. We're, we're, we didn't see all of these things coming, but you did. But you did. And as I thought about this, it's really true for us all. And it's continually true for us all that he's continually leading us into new territory he's leading us into new land he's leading us where we haven't been before he's leading us into terra nova think about this a new baby new baby tavis naming and many of you we're about to have like just this baby burst here you know it's going to be awesome if you want to get in on it go for it all right uh my wife and i we're, we're out we're good we're good some of you are going to be hitting this with a new baby coming. That's new land. Even if you already have a baby, that's new land because now you have another and you have to change again. You have to learn new systems. You have to work on this. Some of you, for the first time, have a child hitting the school years. And you're like, I haven't done this before. I haven't had to uh, do this before. This is, this is different. This is now uh, a whole new adventure. Welcome to Terra Nova. That's good. Some of you are uh, diving into this because you now have a teenager. And I've never had a teenager before. I've never, I, I don't know how to do this. Well, it's Terra Nova. It's new land. You're going to have to stay in step with God's spirit. Some of you have a college student. Some of you have a, uh, a child getting married. Some of you have grandkids coming. Some of you have great grandkids coming. And you're like, I haven't done this before. This is all new. That's the way life is. And all along the way, you will need to stay in step with the spirit all along the way. Now you're saying, well, that's, that's not me at all. Uh, that's not me at all. Some of you are in new territory when it comes to the job scene, when it comes to the job front. You have a new challenge in front of you. You have a new opportunity in front of you. He is leading you uh, into 
Terra Nova into new land, new territory. Some of you have new challenges when it comes to your health because not all new territory is easy or good territory. Think about that path where it's all rocky, where it's all rocky. Some of the territory he's leading you into to grow you, to shape you might be through a new obstacle. It might be a challenge with your health. It might be a challenge with your health. It might be a different challenge in life. And any challenge that we come to in this life along the path we are going to need to stay close to Jesus. We are going to need to stay in step with his spirit. We are going to need to be in rhythm with him. This is the beauty and challenge of this life, that this life is not static. It is always moving. It is always changing. And just when you think you've got it all handled and all mastered, it changes again. Folks, that's why the mission and the Savior never get old. Never get old. They're continually fresh all the time. Let me tell you, when you follow Jesus, it is continually fresh. He is ready for every new thing. Nothing ruffles him. And he's saying, stick with me. Stick with me. You've never been here before. Never been here, but I can lead you through it. I love that the mission that we embrace, it is Christ's mission for this world. It is the mission for us in this valley. It is the mission for people in Germany. It is for people in the Philippines. It is for people around the globe. And it always has been. This is how we would say it. It never gets old. Leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. That is why we exist as a church. And if we get off track from that, if we get out of step with that, if we get off track from the mission that Jesus has for us, then we should shut this place down. Because Jesus and his mission are for everyone, everywhere, until he comes back. Leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. It's true for our students. Leading students into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Why are we doing that Gideon study? Why are we doing that? Leading women into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Why are we working so hard with our kids? Leading kids into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Why do we do stuff with just men? Because God is interested in leading men into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. It never ends. He's always fresh and he's always ahead of us. And he's saying, stick with me. I'm going this way. Today, when we talk about following the Savior, you need to put on your walking shoes. Have you heard this line before? These boots were made for? You've heard that before? Do you know who coined that? Jesus did. There you go. But originally it was sandals. These sandals were made for walking. And it morphed into boots. It morphed. But let me just tell you, and it's going to be quick, I want to show you a man who got in step with the Spirit of God. Those Bibles that I asked you to have out, would you turn to that first book in your Bible, Genesis, and you're like, is he going to be able to finish on time? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I don't, that won't be new territory. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to ask you to turn in the first book of your Bible, the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, and find chapter 12. And I want you to see somebody who got in step with the Spirit. His name was Abram. We know him as Abraham. And here it is, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. I want you to see this man who got in step with the Spirit and began to follow the living God. Here's what it says. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make your name make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you. I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now here it is. Verse four. Don't miss this. So Abram went as the Lord told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. That is modern day Iraq where a lot of the trouble we see happening is right where Abram grew up, right there. And God said, Abram, I'm going this way. Did you notice that he was the one who approached Abram? He was the one who came to him. God is always the initiator. He is always the first mover. He is the one who comes to us and says, come and follow me. Just like the fishermen along the Sea of Galilee, Peter and James and John say, come and follow me. He's always the initiator. He's always the first mover. 
He was the first mover in this situation. Abram was comfy. 75 years he had lived in this. By the way, you say, I'm not up for any more adventure. I'm too old. You're going to have to beat Abram in this, all right? You're going to have to beat him. He's saying, I've got new territory, new land for you. And this is what he says to Abram, really, come and follow me to a new land, a new life, a new future. And I love this. Today, the living God is saying to each of us, this fall, this fall, you've never been there before. The fall of 2014, you've never been there before. And now, I need you to follow me. I'm going to lead you into new territory. And it might be in your family, it might be in your job, it might be in your health, it might be, you name it, you know the terra nova that he's going to lead you into, or maybe you don't even know yet. But here he goes. He wants us to follow him. Do you realize that the destination for those who follow him is all the same? Ultimately, we will, if you follow Jesus by faith, if you come to him and put your faith in him, the destination is the same for all of us. We call it eternal life, life in heaven with the Savior, with Jesus. J.R.R. Tolkien calls it the undying lands, the undying lands. We're looking forward to that. We call it heaven, and it's heaven because he's saying, come with me, remain with me. Now, two things I want you to hold on to because uh, we don't have time for any more than that. Two things this morning. As we dive into the fall of 2014, what do you need to be ready for? What can we learn from just this snapshot from a man named Abram who lived a long time ago, but it's just as fresh today as it was when it was penned by Moses? What do we need to learn about following Jesus on this path through Terra Nova? Here it is. If you're a note taker, would you write this down? Number one. Direction will be given to those in motion. Direction will be given to those in motion. I can remember this. I don't know where I heard it, uh, but it was in my college years that I heard it that God will not steer a parked car. I said, that's deep, Jason. Where is that in the Bible? It's not. But it stuck with me and said, God will not steer a parked car. People pray, God, give me direction. God, give me direction. God, give me direction. Get up and get moving. Get up and get moving and follow what I've already told you. I know, but I want more than that. Get up and get moving and follow what I've already told you. Watch this in verse one. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. He didn't even tell him what the destination was. Do you realize that? We say, well, Obviously, Abram knew that he was going to the promised land. No, he didn't know. And it wasn't even a sing-song way. He was saying, the Lord's going to lead me. I don't know where the promised land is, but I know the one who makes the promise. I know the one who keeps his promise. I know that. And he's worth following. Verse 4 is such a big deal. Genesis 12, verse 4. So Abram went as the Lord told him. The rest of Scripture says, and it was counted as faith, as righteousness, because he believed God and followed him. He didn't have all the answers, and that's tough in our GPS world. I don't know about you, but when I got lost in Selah, I was like, what? what? You know, yelling at my phone because I wanted inch by inch directions, and sometimes the Lord, he just doesn't do that. Because if we have it all laid out, then we say, we don't need you anymore, Jesus. I've got this. I've got it all laid out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go this way. And he's saying, no, you're going to na- need to stay close to me. You're going to need to stay close to me. Direction will be given to those who are in motion. Jesus has said to each of us, come and follow me. Have you, have you obeyed what Jesus has said? Have you put your faith in Jesus? Have you done what he's asked of you? Have you... Have you Listen to what his, he's saying. If you haven't, today's the day to respond to Jesus and follow him. And then more direction will be given. The second thing, very quickly, is that God is the one who blesses and God is the one who curses. We do a terrible job when we say, Jesus, try to keep up with me. Try to keep in step with me. And then I'll bless those who I think should be blessed and I'll curse who those who I think should be cursed. I'll I'll determine that. Look at this. 
all of the I statements from the living God. Verse 2, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Ultimately, that is because Jesus came through the line of Abraham, the line of Abram. He blessed the whole world, including us, including the people in Berlin. He has done it. God is the one who blesses and the one who curses. Sometimes when we get it wrong and we say, Jesus, follow me, instead of us trying to stay in step with the Spirit, we mess it up. How many of you are fixers? You're fixers? You're trying to fix everybody in your family? You're trying to fix all the people at work? You're trying to fix them? That is the Lord's job. Let him do his work. And you be in step with him instead of saying, I'm going to fix you, and then Jesus will love you. I'm going to fix you, and then you'll be all better. I'm going to fix you. And then you say, would somebody point out how messed up you are? Because if you're making them into your image, that is a mess. That is a mess. We see a lot of people in the Bible who tried to fix people, and it didn't work well. Moses trying to do it all on his own. Then the Lord said, nope. That's not how it goes. The Lord wants to use us this fall, okay? As we think about where are you going, Jesus? He's saying, I'm taking you where you haven't been before into the fall of 2014. I've got new territory for you. I've got new ground, new land for you. But if you want to be a blessing to those around you, you're going to need to stay in step with my spirit. If you want to have the proper perspective on this world and what's happening in it, not just our valley, you're going to need to stay in step with my spirit. For all of us, there is Terra Nova. And for all of us, there is the living God who is saying, come with me and I will show you where I'm going. Come and follow me. Come and follow me.